River Rising is really at its core about a loss of control. It's about succumbing to the, the power of the current and the resulting helplessness that, uh, that surrounds that. I set out to depict this uh, after doing a lot of portages and when you portage you, you end up basically coming to an elevation change with the canoe and the idea is that you can't ride the canoe down that, that passage of water. Usually it's a waterfall or a rapid or, or just something that there's so many obstacles in that it would be dangerous to go down. This project started in about 2017 when I was sitting on one of these precipices just with my canoe looking over what seemed like an obstacle course of disaster. And I thought it would be really fascinating to, to get images all along the way through these, these, these sets of rapids. And at the time I had just been working with action cameras and sort of durable waterproof cameras uh, like GoPros. And so I decided to put one of the, my GoPros on a flotation device and then just let it go down the river and see what happened. The images that came back from the camera had no preconceived um, composition whatsoever. Horizon line became something that was not ever straight um, and you just just don't get control of the image, much like losing control of your balance. As an artist, you're always trying to like have a perfect sense of composition within the image, and motion was a key, like capturing that sense of motion from within the current and the froth, and literally smacking up against rocks, falling off of cliffs, uh, being turned upside down, being dragged under the water was something that often happened. The camera would flip over, go backwards, and just be pulled along the bottom of the riverbed. For me, I wanted to make the paintings as big as could really fit through the door, so that there was a sense of immersion in, in, the, in the experience. And immersion inside the water, but also there was no way of portraying the, the great sense of um, discomfort or unease uh, or off balance, off kilter, without going at a huge scale. So that's why you'll see the seven large pieces in the, in the front room, because I wanted the viewer to step into the front room and, and like, a, like a giant projection, be able to walk around and, and feel the storyline change and just be immersed in that, in that turbulence. that the video was just as important as the, the individual paintings or the groupings of the paintings. And so we developed this, what I think of as like a, a long run of a boat that goes down and it's all the snippets of all those, those moments of, of, of falling, all those moments of being dragged along the river current. We wanted to make sure that the, the video was projected in sort of a dark room so you could see it, but also that the audio bled through into the exhibition so that while you were looking at all these paintings, there was this, this you know, motion, noise of being underwater. Within this, this project, I got really excited about the idea of building various crafts that would navigate these waterways more effectively. The first couple of crafts that I built were total disasters. The first one was on a, an inflatable pillow which went down the river but as soon as it hit any sort of bump or uh, fall or anything like that the weight of the camera being on the top of the pillow just pulled the camera underneath the water and then all I did was record everything underwater. Over time one of the things I really became uh, interested in developing was a ballast for the boat so trying to put more weight on the bottom than there was on the top which would mean that if it went over over falls, it would potentially right itself as soon as it had gone through whatever disaster it had gone through. It was no longer about just getting one split second where the thing went over a crest and forward or backwards, it was going down the river and you would either see what it just went over or you would see what was ahead. And, and that's when it started becoming more of a journey 
the imagery became more of a journey. One of the things that surprised me was that the boat would often get caught uh, seemingly magically. in a way that was a loop and it, it couldn't throw itself out of it. So despite the, the speed and the turbulence and the force behind the water, uh, in what I think of as like the chute, everything to the side of that is often just circling around in these eddies that wouldn't allow the boat to go back in. So half of my job would be to run down the river and get collect various sticks to poke them back into the current which isn't something that I conceived of early on in this process. I, I sort of thought that you put it down the waterfall and it's just going to go as far as the water pushes it. Not the case. I think that, I think it's hard to look at landscape painting now without thinking about the Group 7 and Tom Thompson. And one of the stories that goes along with that group and with Tom is Tom's mysterious death in the middle of Canoe Lake, um, which, which draws on people's fear about being out in nature alone and and sort of reinforces the, uh, the the inherent danger in being in the wild so if you walk around the show and you look at dates um, you might notice that there's two distinct periods of time in which i was working on the show the first was 2009 in which all of the the major large works were done in and and the sort of set of eight studies of those were done. And really that was pre-COVID, and it was a time where I was mostly focused in the power of the water and the sense of lack of control. During lockdowns, when I was stuck in the studio just looking at work and making work, I started to uh, spend a lot of time looking at that group of work and started to feel connected, emotionally connected to the feeling of unease and the, the lack of knowledge of what, behind, what might be behind the next bend or the next rock um, or fall or uh, rapid. And, uh, and so I started to have that feeling that the, the camera, the, the vessel that was going down the river connected to it in a way that was more personal. So that's why you'll notice that half of the work is, is from 2021 and the other half is from 19.